Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem Shai. Double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the brother Shakti from the Chicago camp. Coming back to you with what I hope is another quick and edifying sit down. And this segment is coming from the Common Sense Show with Dave Hodges. And it's entitled, Are You Hungry? You Will Be. So let's let this play. By the thousands, tens of thousands, and it's growing exponentially. But here's what you're not seeing in the media. It's order. It, 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 let me put it this way, ladies and gentlemen. It's um. I'm going to say it as gently as I can. Ecuador is going through the same thing, but the mainstream media will not report it. Venezuela has not changed in with regard to the hunger that was first reported a year and a half ago, two years ago, and it hasn't changed. Mainstream media doesn't want to cover it. And you have to ask yourself the question, why? And I'll tell you, the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, is, um, well, I'll just say this. The reason why is because of the fact that they don't want you to know what's coming here. You're, you're not seeing anything reported about the food supply chain problem. You're not seeing anything. Hard, I, I don't know where you're going to find this in the media other than here and, and in the independent media where you're looking at situations in which uh, food is beginning to become scarce in some areas. Uh, it's showing up in certain industries now. Um, I mean, you're not seeing any of this. Oh, isn't it great? We're sending National Guard to play the role of rudimentary nurses with minimal training to New York City. That's great. Well, why don't we send them to the food packing plants, as I've said 20 dozen times? I, I just beside myself on why we're not dealing with these issues at face value. Okay, so bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, here's the bottom line. You are in a situation where if you don't take care of your food needs, and I mean both locally, and I would recommend a storable food that will last for a while, you know, you're, you're really putting you and your family at risk. Um, food is going to be a problem on every country. Can you imagine your China is not back to work yet? Not in a big way. And now they're quarantining, locking down 100 million people. What do you think that's gonna have on their food supply? And if people started to starve to death in China, do you think we'd even hear about it? Is starvation even avoidable in China? I don't think it is. I think we're gonna have our fair amount here, just like we did in the Great Depression. We need to get ready. We need to demand that President Trump put the National Guard into the food packing plants and get them operational now and issue an executive order that tells farmers, you have killed your last cow, you've slaughtered your last chicken, Okay, we are going to open these plants up and we're going to make sure there's transportation to these plants and then distribution to end point of sale. Plain and simple. Well, that's it for the Common Sense Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Please share. The and there you have it. All right. Gross famine is about to engulf the entire world. And a lot of it's going down. In South America, where you pretty much got the, 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 the bulk of the Northern Kingdom. All right. As he said, this is not being reported. All right. Stuff with starvation was going down in Venezuela for a long time before the mainstream media even remotely started saying some things here and there about it. So with this going down in many other countries in South America and overseas, the mainstream media is not going to report that. They're not going to report that this is going to happen here. Can you imagine 350 million people knowing that in the next couple of months or maybe within the year, all right, they will probably starve to death? Man, this whole place would be burnt down be riding in the streets everywhere it would be a complete chaos here in the united states and that's why as dave said this whole issue is just being kept under wraps so nobody knows 
So everybody goes on and continues like everything is okay. Like everything will reopen. Everything will be go back to normal and then we'll eat. But it's not going to be so. Right? Because the Lord didn't ordain it that way. He prophesied that many people are going to starve to death. As we go into the book of 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter and the 17th verse, it says, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils, bad times. What shall I do when these evils shall come? So Ezra is saying, destruction to me, destruction to me. Who's going to save me when all these calamities befall the earth? It says, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. See, you all haven't seen nothing yet. And see, the Lord has given small clues that a famine is coming, but yet many of our people will not repent. They still go down to Egypt for help. By way of these stimulus checks and what soon to come is uh, the ultimatum of you either take this vaccine and the chip so you can get some food or you starve to death. So many of you strong, independent women who are dependent on government funds, this is the choice that you're going to have to make in the very near future. And I'm going to tell you like this, you'd be a fool to accept it. Because there's no guarantee that this guy is still going to feed you even when you take it. He can just say, make up whatever reason he wants to and say, well, this didn't go through right and that didn't go through right. So we're still not going to feed you. So you got vaccinated, which is going to make you sick and kill you. You got the chip, which the Lord's definitely going to kill your ass. And you don't have no food. Three strikes you out. All right. You sold your soul for nothing. That's why you need to get right. Because as we continue, it says, Behold, victual shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth. Sword, famine, and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger, the sword shall the sword destroy. This is why you need to get right. The Lord's telling you that the majority of our people, you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans out there, the majority of you people are going to die by the famine. And that's one of the most tragic, horrific, and terrible ways to die even the scripture says itself that it's better to die by the sword than to die by the famine and that's the judgment awaiting many of our people because you wicked and you don't want to get right but if you repent the lord may have mercy on you but the thing is you have to repent and if you are sincere about it then the Lord is going to protect you as we go into Job, the fifth chapter, I believe starting at the 19th verse. I could be wrong. Yep, Job 5 and 19, it says, He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. Okay? So if you're a man of the Lord, you don't have to worry. The Lord got you. If you're a woman with a man of the Lord, the Lord got you. If you're a woman that's trying to be righteous and you don't have a man, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to put you with a man of the Lord so that you can eat. And it doesn't matter what scenario that you're in. It could be the dire circumstances. You ran out of money. 
You lost your job. All right. You told the government, no, I'm not going to take the, the, the benefits or the vaccine. Hey, it don't matter what the situation is. The Lord is going to make a way that you can eat. It says in famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from power of the sword. OK. And when we scroll down to verse 22, it says at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of beast of the earth. And that matches up with that precept uh, where it says, uh, I think it's in Isaiah, where it says they shall. Uh, uh, you shall eat. But uh, the, 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 the wicked, they'll be hungry. They'll mourn and you laugh. All right. They're going to be mourning and laughing because they go have nothing to eat. But you're going to be able to laugh because you'll be eating. You have a full stomach and you it'll only strengthen your faith because the Lord. Did what he said he was going to do because you chose to stay steadfast and keep your integrity. That's why you'll be able to laugh. Because your faith will be strengthened because the Lord is a man. That fulfilled his promise. When all this hell breaks loose, when folks stomach touching their back, when folks talking about stealing and killing people just to get a, a, a package of ketchup. Hey, man, you ain't, you're not going to have to worry about that because the Lord got you. All right. And there's plenty of examples in the Bible where. If you were a man of the Lord, the Lord provided for you. Great story is Daniel in the lion's den. He didn't know how he was going to eat. But he ate. He sent one of his scribes over <laughs> and fed him. Nothing has changed. The Lord provided for the prophets then. He's going to provide for the prophets now. The only thing you have to do is just stay on the righteous path. And for those who are straddling the fence, you heard what the scripture said. You better get right or else. Hey, this judgment's for you. So with that being said, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to you. by Shem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostle elders, the great millstone who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. With that, we're going to say Shalom.